Welcome to Crappie Hippies at the Bench, an instructional video series on how to tie your own jigs, flies, and create your own fish catching baits. Brought to you by Glasswater Angling for a Better Outdoors, makers of lead free fishing tackle, inventors of Angle King, the Crappie Dooler, and home to hand tied jester jigs, Ring King Paddle Tail Grubs, lead free jig heads, and more. Check us out at glasswaterangling.com. And now here's Crappie Hippie at the Bench. Hello everybody, welcome to Crappie Hippie at the Bench. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, before we get going here, I just had a couple things. Today we're going to tie the bugger jig. Uh, that's based on this pattern right here, the woolly bugger. Generally one of the first patterns you learn to tie when you start tying flies and the fly tires are making these nymph jigs now and borrowing from us like crazy and of course we've always borrowed from them too uh, and uh, the bugger jig is just a natural because buggers are great for panfish, crappie, uh, bluegill and such they're also very good for bass and walleye in the bigger versions so everybody needs to learn how to tie a bugger jig it's a really cool jig uh, I set this up my usual way where I do the tie and talk and then I do a segment at the end where it's just the tie without me talking set to music. So if you prefer to learn that way, just watch and learn. I've done it uh, the way I usually do now. Thanks to your constructive criticisms, I have brought the camera in much tighter on my work and I hope you enjoy it uh, that much more. So if you just wanna go straight to the tie, jump to right there and you can just see it up close and personal. But if you want to watch me go through it first and tie one uh, with some chit chat and some history and some advice on how to do it uh, just watch all the way through alrighty enough talk let's get busy and tie one of the funnest most effective jigs you can possibly tie the bugger jig thanks for tuning in and let's get going put that down and what we're going to build up one we're going to build today is one I call uh, blue frost which is this one and uh, it's, I never used a powder blue jig in my life uh, until I got back into reservoir fishing a few years ago. And all my best friends are like, oh no, in the winter time especially, powder blue is fantastic. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna put a little tinsel in it. We're gonna make it kind of fancy. And I'm gonna tie it big for, for white bass or walleye or something because an eighth ounce jig is a lot better. Um, I tie these in black and in, in chenille, I mean in uh, chartreuse in all kinds of colors. I generally go smaller, 16, 30 second, even smaller than that, uh, for panfish because it's a really good panfish pattern, but it does work. I don't know if it's supposed to look like a minnow. I just know it ends up looking like something good to eat to a lot of species a lot of the time. So it's worth learning to make, okay? So here we go. Okay, now down here I got my got this box it was for uh, some sort of electrical parts and I got it at an auction for like uh, 30 cents and uh, so I put all my my homemade jig heads I keep them color sorted in there not all of them these are just the colors I use the most so uh, and this is my eighth ounce box I've got one of these for 30 second and one for 16th um, but there you go I got an eighth ounce lead three <laughs> lead three lead free bismuth alloy jig head it's uh, like 88 percent bismuth um 12 percent uh, tin uh, it's nice and heavy it is 90 percent as heavy as lead uh, so we're in great shape there and now that we're going to get down to the nitty gritty uh got to put on the glasses of power here we go now i'm gonna First thing I'm gonna do, these old Thompson vices can kind of spin on you, so I'm gonna make set those jaws up nice and straight. And we're gonna tie it with the hook eye down, remember? That's how we start. All right, and then we're going to, uh, we gotta have white chenille, and if we're gonna use white chenille, then we are going to use white thread to get started okay because that's how we're going to hide the thread in our white chenille now you don't always have to hide the thread you can use thread as an accent too but in this one we're going to blend it in so here we go now see how i'm wrapping that tag i'm trapping that tag down in there and i'm gonna go down and i'm gonna go back a little ways and then because i'm going to start this fly right in here with a tail that's where i'm going to leave it um, okay, and so I'm going to come in here, and that's where I'm going to leave it, because that's where I'm going to start my tail. 
and the tail's going to just be made out of marabou. Now, marabou used to come off the marabou stork, but that bird's uh, in trouble, so we get an even nicer, I think, just as nice, just as soft, just as fish catching a, a feather off the common turkey. Although now, of course, they're breeding turkeys to have big fat butts with lots of turkey boo on them. And God bless the farmers of America for keeping us in these wonderful feathers. And here we go. So Now, I don't want this tail to be longer than the overall body, so I'm going to kind of measure it out here. I'm going to go ahead and clip a piece off there. Okay, and I'm going to put that on there, and I'm going to end up. So one, two nice and loose. Pull straight down. Wrap it in one way. Now, if all that junk was too long, I would cut it some, but I can trap all of that with thread. And now I'm pulling really hard. This is 210 flat wax, 210 denier thread. And I'm going to bring that down right to the hook point. Okay, that's as far back as I want my chenille to go. Now, I just want to jazz this up a little bit, so I'm going to put in some tinsel. This is a brand called D-Light Blue. A friend of mine, Carol. Sylvester, God rest her soul, she was at a flea market. She knew I liked to fish, she knew I liked to tie jigs, and she saw a big bag of metallic embroidery thread for like five bucks, and she bought it and gave it to me, and this cool blue color was in there. So I'm gonna take some, take some strands of it, like this. Okay, and I'm gonna cut them off. All right, and we're gonna put in, now remember, the jig is upside down. So this is the belly on top. And what I wanna do with this, is run it down the sides. So I'm gonna take one strand, I'm gonna take one big long strand like that, I'm gonna double it, I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna double it again. Okay, I'm gonna make them kinda even, it's not imperative that they be exactly even. I'm gonna share a piece of that down here for the other side, okay, and now, I'm going to double that again and have a look. And yeah. And don't worry, this will all straighten out in the water. It's fine. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put, put it on this side. Okay. Loose, loose. Now tighten down. Lash that in. Okay. So now you can see I've got that in there. Now you can do two things now. You can either turn the jig clear over like this. Or you can just kind of do it by feel. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to tie in a few on this side. So once again, we're going to double. Okay. We're going to double it. We're going to cut it. And so now it's nice and even. We're going to double it over again. To get the length where we want it, we're going to take this extra piece we borrowed from the that longer strand. We're going to double him over too. Okay. And now I've got four strands on this side. A bunch of strands I'm going to put in there. One easy, easy, and then lash it down. Okay, now we're going to turn her back over. So now we got some nice blue tinsel flaring out on each side. And that's pretty cool. And that's going to give us some flash and some kick. Now, to make the, the poof, the feathers, the hackle, oh, uh, you're going to need hackle. Now, I got hold of this beautiful four and five inch um, saddle hackle. And it is really good for wet flies. Uh, my wife is a designer, and she worked for a lady that did, uh, she did costumes for a gal that shot baby pictures. And, of course, powder blue. That's a great baby color, and they made little headdresses and little this and that's with this stuff. Uh, and then the gal moved her business and sold Kathy a bunch of this stuff as, at a song, and, of course, she gave some to me because she's the best. So I've got the hackle, okay? And for a jig this size, we'll, we'll need at least one. I'm going to pick out another one, maybe a little smaller. See how this has this webbing in here? Um, okay, you see that where it's more dull? That's your, your wet fly. That's your more soft feather. The stiffer ones are where there isn't so much webbing. So I'm gonna, I want to use one that doesn't have quite so much webbing, like one more like that. Now, it's like, well, my wife isn't a designer, and I don't know where to I, you know, go to get... Uh, Hackle in a big, big chunk like that. What am I supposed to do? Well, you can go to Barlow's. You can go to Jan's Netcraft. You can go to LurePart's.com. You can go to uh, 
your local fly shop here in the Kansas City metro area. That would be KK Fly Fishers, and you can buy it. Um, I don't. You don't need to buy a prime grade A saddle hackle. It's very expensive in the little eighth ounce packs that they sell. Uh, what you want to do is ask for a wet fly hackle where the uh, feathers tend to run from you know two to two to five inches or, or get as close to it as you can it's it's gonna seem like an expense that'll probably be like twenty dollars but you get tons and tons and tons of jigs out of a out of a cape um also um sometimes you can find these costume feathers cheap online and so on but what you want is a good saddle hackle boa or a good strong saddle hackle and this is the part we need right here. See, this stuff's not going to flare out and give us give us as much of what we want. So we're going to not have so much webbing in there. And we're going to we're going to save this. We're going to save it. You bet. You know, I can do stuff with that. Believe you me, we can do um, dubbing. We can do uh, little tiny jigs. We can do um, um, all kinds of stuff with that fuzzy on there. And um, we'll show all kinds of ways to use scrap bag scraps in other videos. Okay, so now we're going to put this on. And I'm going to put it on tip first. It's either going to get bigger as it comes forward, and that's if you tie it tip first, or it's going to get smaller as it comes forward, and that's if you tie it butt first. Um, I want to tie it tip first because I want it to get bigger. And um, also, just on a last minute inspiration, why don't we, eh, why don't we take and throw a little tinsel party on that, okay? And uh, we're going to take this, and we're not going to double it. We're not going to do anything with it. But since, you know, this is a thing when you emulate fly patterns, even the simple ones like a bugger are more complicated than a lot of your jig patterns. It just is. Uh, that's why some fly fishers are kind of snotty toward jig tires. Like, we, you know, we're, you know, but we're perfectly capable of doing anything we want because we're talented, intelligent people, too and uh but just be ready for more steps and be ready to think steps ahead so you know where do i tie this in well i'm going to finish the the bug up here so everything's going to have to come forward except the chenille and i'll show you about that in a minute so we're gonna we're gonna put that tinsel in we're gonna put the one hackle i prepared and i've got a spare one ready just in case if i get up here and i don't like the look of the head i think it needs more um these are nice big long hackles but there's still a lot of ways for a eighth ounce jig so uh, if we get up here and, and we're not digging it then we've got the uh, means to uh, take care of it right there so we're gonna tie that in try not to let this get in our way and make us frustrated and you see i'm just kind of holding it with my finger fingers over here okay now i'm going to take this all the way forward because i'm going to put my chenille in up here and you may be saying well crappie hippie what you know what are you going to go back and tie at the back? No, I'm going to go down and I'm going to come back. And on a bigger jig, like an eighth ounce jig, this is one. This is a method uh, that I really like. Uh, I had my friend Kim Burnett show me uh, that on his eighth ounce and his quarter ounce jigs, he likes to double up on the body, and I tend to agree. Um, I think it's a little much, you know. And and you know, we we just. We try to keep it simple. Now, you might say, well, I tie mostly quarter ounce jigs. I get the big chenille. Well, okay. Then you may not need to do this. But I tie all sizes of jigs, and I don't have the money to have white chenille or any other color in three or four different sizes, which you can get. You can get fat. This is medium, small, and you can get extra small, extra fine. So you can run yourself out of a lot of dollars if you just got to have all the diameters. Now, the thing is, you know, you get down here, you hold the tail in place, and you, you, you pull that because you want your, uh, your chenille to be on there good and tight. And I hope, you know, you can see how, what a kind of a drag it is. Everything's trying to, you know, let's run this, I'm going to run this tinsel over here kind of out of my way. And I like to go off the card. Now, you can cut your, you know, you can cut six inches of chenille or whatever you want and end up with a bunch of scraps. But I end up cutting it short because I guess I'm too thrifty or too cheap or whatever. And I end up cutting it too short too much of the time. So for my 100% efficiency compulsion, I just, <laughs> I just wrap it off the card. Then I get, it can be a pain in the butt, yes, but I get the amount I want. 
and uh, I don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to cut that off flush as tight as I can with the uh, head there. And uh, now I'm going to bring this delicious tinsel forward. And this is going to really, okay, so we're going we're gonna to kind of angle it in here. And we're going to make some nice wraps. And we're not going to try to use it all up. I got a little more than I needed. And I hope you see that I've got it doubled. So I'm going to bring in some extra up here at the head just for fun. But that's enough. That's enough. So I'm going to bring that around the thread. I'm going to trap it with the thread. I'm going to trap it another time with my 210 denier flat waxed thread. Um, two denier is, is, 210 denier is pretty heavy. Um, some thread is measured 5 aught, 6 aught, so on. But um, that's not as good a measure of strength as denier. Um, denier is how many fibers it is in the actual thread, whereas 6 aught, 5 aught is just the, the actual the diameter. Um, so, you know, they're both good ways to think about thread. If you go in like Uni Thread does, there's a lot with the aught system. This is about a, a 6 aught. Um, and the lower uh, the number is when you go 6 aught is smaller than 4 aught is bigger than 8 aught so but you want to get into a 210 denier because we're not doing little tiny hooks and we're not doing super fine work we want it to be strong I mean a good tie like this should last 50 to 100 fish that's kind of our st informal standard in home jig tying Fine. okay so now we're going to take the, the hackle pliers now you can do this with your fingers, yes, 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 and I've done it with my fingers, but hackle pliers cost like three or four bucks. They're, they're not a uh, prohibitive expense, and you see how I got that all standing up and fluffed out and flared out before I started, and it's just making a cool bugger body, but it's not going to go far enough, so I'm going to work in. I'm just going to take one, two wraps just to kind of hold that because I like my buggers nice and full and I like a meaty and juicy looking uh, I think that's the whole point of the pattern a lot of movement a lot of uh, excitement on the part of the fish saying hey that looks like some serious protein going on there you know and so once again I'm gonna I'm gonna flare it out and you can see the webbing kind of starts down in here so this one's got some nice stiff stuff I want that to be at the end toward the head so I'm gonna start this one opposite I'm going to save all this. I'm not going to cut it over the trash can. I'm going to throw it over there in the scrap pile and go in the scrap bag. And then I am going to take a second hackle and I'm going to work it in there. And you might be worried, oh, that tinsel you put in there, that's just getting lost. It's like, no, it's not. Calm down. It's fine. It's going to show through. You've got to remember a fish is a lot smaller than you. He's going to get a lot closer. He's going to be able to see a lot more detail than you can because his eye is different. Um, he's adapted to see things in his world, and believe me, little teeny sparkles of tinsel will be showing out between that hackle and make this look fantastic. So now, we're going to have a big hackle here at the front, and we love that, and we're going to, now we're going to come here, here. See, another thing is it really helped hold it, see, because it's really helpful to have two hands, because I want to, I don't want to trap a lot of this hackle but I got to trap that little end okay and now I've got that and I want to hold on to the you know this is why having a thread with a good weight on it is important so it holds that thread tight for me you know look guys I've tied without a bobbin I've tied without hackle pliers I've tied without everything because when I was young I was dirt poor and I just had to learn to tie to keep myself in jigs and I didn't have the equipment I got it you know a bit at a time and all I'm saying that is, is just don't be, you know, don't feel bad. If you got to go a little slower and, you know, you're a little more frustrated because you're, you're doing everything by hand, it can be done. And if you want to get started, you know, just without the, all the tools, just to see if you even dig it, you know, who can fault you for that? Nobody. But uh, I love it. And, but I'm still not to where I've invested a lot. Okay, that's pretty good. I am not the... I am not the nicest, neatest, neatest fan, you know, fanciest tire, but if I was a big old crappie down in there, and another thing you can do is kind of once you get done here, we'll, we will take, um, we will take a uh, pick and we will, any fi hackle fibers that are trapped, we can kind of 
we can help them out a little bit and then I'm gonna come down in here I'm gonna put the I like to put the cement on the thread and then I'm gonna get all this out of my way all of it if I possibly can you know, it's annoying the way that keeps little ones keep popping out but and then I'm gonna wrap this in till I get that glue in there okay and then I'm gonna you know and you can take a few more wraps to sweep stuff back and that was one two three right there and I'm gonna loosen straighten this guy up really wah! all right and I'm gonna pull that down and kind of wiggle it down a little bit okay and then I'm gonna take and do this and I'm gonna go one two three like this and one time over okay and now I've got the big double whammy on there um, in terms of not now I pull it and then I break it off and then for insurance I will take another little dippity do and this is just Sally Hansen's clear fingernail polish I use loon hardhead I use sometimes use vinyl I like either clear fingernail polish or loon hardhead though better be, than vinyl because they're easier to use uh, simply uh, vinyl is very indestructible it gives you a very good finish but so do these other products and they're cheaper and they're easier to get uh, especially Sally Hansen's and this is even Sally Hansen's extreme I don't know if this is better or worth it than the regular you know this is extreme wear I don't know if that's better than hard as nails uh, but uh, that's the one that I like the best and, and a lot of guys agree with me so all right so now I'm gonna come in here I'm gonna find my pick here find my bodkin who would their quiet you know quietus make and I'm just gonna kind of get in here and straighten things out here and there and don't worry about you know these little stray ones up front I don't know if this is supposed to be fish fins or bug legs or if it just hits enough triggers it really doesn't matter what it is it hits enough triggers that fish love that pattern and a lot of different species love that pattern and you can tie this imagine this with a chartreuse body and black hackle imagine this with a brown chartreuse body and some dark brown hackle or olive hackle imagine a chartreuse body with uh um, chartreuse hackle or, or fluorescent yellow going over the top of it or a fluorescent yellow hackle and a chartreuse hackle so you get that acid rain and you can fiddle with the tail longer shorter different material stiffer uh, more tinsel less tinsel any way you got it's just a fun bug to tie and it works and there you go there he goes boo through the water hunting them crappies hunting those walleyes uh, a fun pattern to tie a fun pattern to have I hope you enjoy it. Yes, she is like a stained glass window. said no one just a flicker in her eyes with the sun
Just a poor 